Tear me. What does it do? Let's find out. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellabands, nedinthecloud.com. And today we're going to be looking at what TerraMate does. And that's because I put up a LinkedIn poll and said, hey, do you want me to check out one of these technologies? And you pick TerraMate. So that's what we're doing. This video is going to be a little different than the usual videos that I put up for Terraform Tuesday. And I want to talk about that for a moment. So if you don't care about any of that, just jump to the time code that I put down here somewhere or look in the chapters. Should be easy to figure it out. Put some background here. I've been doing Terraform Tuesdays for mm, like three years now, three and some change. And over the course of Terraform Tuesdays, it's moved to a very informal thing. I used to literally just go live on YouTube with Terraform Tuesdays with a vague idea of what I wanted to talk about and just sort of stumble my way through it. No scripts, no pre-built demos. Nothing like that, just me talking to you, and I had no real background. You could see the window of my basement. It was fine. It was fine. You got to start somewhere. Over time, Terraform Tuesdays has evolved. It has become more professional to a certain degree. Part of that is because now I have sponsors, and those sponsors, you know, they expect a certain level of professionalism from me, especially for a fully sponsored video. And thank you, obviously, to the sponsors who helped me, you know, be able to do this sort of thing. But I'm a little worried that I've overcorrected in that sense, starting out, you know, completely live and then slowly moving to, okay, I'm going to record and do some editing ahead of time to, okay, I'm going to build out some demos before I just jump right on and have some bullet points to talk through to, I'm going to script the entire thing, write the demos, film the demos separately from my voiceover, and then put them all together with a bunch of editing that I'm kind of okay at, but not great. I know I'm not the world's greatest editor. It's not the thing that I'm trying to build up strength in. I fear that I've made it a little too polished, and I wanted to get back to my roots a little bit and just dive into some cool technology and take you along for the ride. So that's what this video is gonna be. I put up a poll this morning on LinkedIn that asked, which of these technologies do you want me to do a Terraform Tuesday video on? I'm going to spend half an hour looking through that technology you're not going to spend half an hour. I am going to edit this for, you know, time and content and all that. But I'm basically starting knowing nothing about this solution, in this case, Terramate. And you and I are going to find out together what does Terramate do, how is it implemented, and why you might want to take advantage of it in your Terraform usage. So with that context out of the way, let's dig into Terramate. Now, the first thing that I did, because this is where I feel like I should start, I'm sure this has something to do with infrastructure's code and Terraform, which means I'm probably going to want to store that code that I'm testing out somewhere. So I created a repository on GitHub called Terramate. And that's where I'm going to be pushing stuff to. So I have that open in a browser. I also have Visual Studio Code open. And in Visual Studio Code, I just have the repository open and I can pull up a terminal and run commands from here. So that's kind of the, the homework that I did before we started this. So let's jump back to the browser. And let's start by just going to Terramate's website. So I'm I'm going to put in Terramate, and hopefully it gets... Well, I'll try Terramate.io. I'm guessing I'm right. Okay, so it is a .io. Could have called that. And before I forget, I'm going to blow up this website a little bit so it's easier on your eyes and honestly easier on mine. I'm no spring chicken anymore. So let's figure out what Terramate does. Where would I start? Well, let's start at the front page. Okay, so Terramate Cloud is an IAC management platform that simplifies and secures your Terraform in GitHub Actions. Okay, interesting. So from this, I take that it's an automation platform. It may not be just Terraform, but it certainly focuses on Terraform. And it also assumes that you're using GitHub Actions. So it's probably good that I set up a GitHub repository ahead of time, since I'm probably going to need to put some code in there and some GitHub Actions. Truth is, Terraform doesn't scale. I mean, that's like, sure. By itself, it doesn't. <laughs> that's why there's other tools. Uh, Ter Terramate CLI scales your Terraform with Terramate stacks. Okay, interesting. So it looks like there's a CLI involved with Terramate, and they have a concept called stacks. Now, I know 
The People HashiCorp recently introduced Terraform stacks as a preview, I think it's a private preview at the moment on Terraform Cloud, but it may be a very similar concept where you can take a large configuration and break it into smaller configurations and link those configurations together in a stack. So that means if you change one element of the stack, it will have an impact on the other elements, but you'll be able to predictably figure out what that change will be. And it looks like it also gives you a dashboard view of all the things that you're managing with Terramate. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that say to me? Okay, it needs some visibility into your deployments. So it's going to hook into your GitHub repositories in some way and track the status of the things that you deploy with GitHub Actions. And I'm assuming it might also connect into the various clouds where you're deploying things, but that remains to be seen. Okay, and it also does drift detection. That seems extremely useful. <laughs> Okay, so all right, I'm pretty happy with this front page. I think I have a decent idea of what they're doing. Let's go to the docs. That's where I like to start. We'll go to the docs. What is Terramate CLI? It's an open source IAC orchestration tool for Terraform, OpenTofu, TerraGrunt, Kubernetes, Pulumi. Okay, so it supports a bunch of stuff, including Bicep. So if you wanted to use Azure specific DSLs, you could do that with Bicep. Okay, how does it work? Tell me how it works. It uses HCL as the configuration language. That's cool, I like that. that. So I'm still using HCL. I don't have to learn yet another DSL on top of everything. All right, so I kind of have an idea. I will need some sort of command line here. I'm going to need the Terramate CLI. So what do I need to do in my quick start? First, I need to set up Terramate. So I gotta go to the installation section and I have to get the CLI tool and possibly the Terramate language server. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna go to the download page and <laughs> pull their release down and, uh-oh, well, that's a broken link for their page. <laughs> that's not great. Let's try the releases page on GitHub. Okay, that took me to the right thing. Uh, this seems to be the latest release. Let's go down to assets and I need the zip file for Windows. I'm gonna grab that. Okay, I have downloaded the release and I'm placed it in a folder that's in my path. So let's just make sure it's installed. Let's head back to Visual Studio Code and under Terramate, I'll just run Terramate, me with a dash V. Okay, so dash V doesn't work, but I can do ter Terramate version. Okay, I'm on 0.4.3, that's what I downloaded. Okay, so Terramate is now installed. Cool, phase one, we got Terramate installed and the language server installed, though I'm not sure how that integrates with Visual Studio Code yet. Let's go back to the getting started guide. All right, after reading this for a moment, what it appears to say is if I invoke Terramate inside a Git repository, it's just gonna assume that this repository is my project root. If that's not the case, if I wanna use it in a directory that doesn't have Git installed, then in the project root, I have to create this special file called terramate.tm.hcl. Now I already have my Git repository set up, so we're gonna skip this. And instead I'm going to run this command, which is terramate create my site. So I'm gonna copy that, head back to VS Code. We'll paste that in here and see what it did. I created a subfolder called my site and in there it created a file called stack.tm.hcl. Okay, and what is in that file? Let me hide the terminal for a second. Okay, so I have a stack with the name, description, and ID. Again, no idea where that ID number comes from, but I'm sure that will be explained at some point, or maybe it just generates it automatically. All right, it says to run Terramate list. Now, before we do that, let's see what other commands are available for Terramate, because, ooh, there's a lot here. List is one of them. It does have an FMT, which will properly format everything. That's nice. You can create something with create. You can see the version. There's a run, there's a generate, and then there's a bunch of experimental features and install completion. So if you want shell complete, you can do that as well. Cool, okay, so now I have like a good idea of the basic commands that are available. The one that we just ran was terramate create, but you know, I'm assuming if I do dash H, it'll give me a whole bunch of additional information in here and you can disable some Git stuff. You can set the ID of the stack. Hey, there's, there's the answer to my question. You can set the ID of the stack yourself, but it defaults to using UUID to just generate a unique identifier. Okay, the next thing it wants me to do is run Terramate list. I keep typing Terraform, just have it, right? I'm gonna have to create aliases 
for Terramate, like TM or something. So I stopped doing that. The repository has untracked files. I know that because I haven't checked any of it in yet. And we have one Terramate stack called my site. Let me look at this and try to figure out what I think it's going to do. Generate HCL says, I want you to create an HCL file. It's going to be called mysite.tf. And in the content of that file, there's going to be a resource of local file type called myset, mysite. So we're defining a resource block using this HCL. So I'm going to copy this and go back to that stack.tm.hcl file. And it says to append this. I don't think the dot, dot, dot is supposed to be in there. So this, this becomes a little unclear because what I'm seeing here is I think that was supposed to go inside the stack block and they might want to work on those directions a little bit because it's confusing the way that that is laid out. Okay. I think we're good now, even though stack is not recognized. So if I go back and look at this, I'm assuming that's what they want. But because they're not showing me the stack block from earlier, I'm not sure if that's actually the way it's supposed to be. All right, so it seems that they now want me to run Terramate Generate. And I have a schema error, unrecognized block. Okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe this goes outside of the stack block in its own block. That's the sort of thing that you need to be very clear about in your directions. Okay, let's try it again. All right, now it was successful. So we successfully generated some Terraform code. Let me look in this Terraform code. Okay, so it was generated by Terramate and it is a local file with some content being directly generated in. All right, so what's this next concept they're introducing? It's called globals. It says to create dynamic content, Terramate uses variables called globals and they're defined within a globals block and each directory inherits all globals from its parent directory, and any globals with the same name will be overwritten. So what that says to me is if I declare a global in a parent directory, and then I declare a global in a subdirectory, the subdirectory will take precedence. It will overwrite whatever I've defined in the parent directory. So we're gonna define a global variable in the root directory. So we're gonna create a file called globals.tm.hcl and add some content to it. Let's go back here and we're going to create a file called globals.tm.hcl and paste that in there. All right, so now I've defined a globals with the title my website. Now I assume I want to use that globals value somewhere in this stack definition. So we're going to update that and replace the title with this. So now global.title is a variable that I can reference from within there. Now it's gonna have me run some commands in the project root. This should be interesting only because I am running on Windows in a PowerShell and it may not like all of these commands. All right, it created a directory called modules slash my site. It moved the contents of that my site configuration into a subdirectory of modules and it removed the current my site. So I now have basically moved my existing configuration down into a modules directory. In the modules, my site, remove the stack block. So in here, all I have is generate HCL. This generates HCL for me. All right, so now if I run Terramate list, I have no stacks because I removed that stack block. Now we're gonna create two stacks, one for environment and one for prod and one for dev. I'll create both of those. And so that created two new directories, one for development, one for production, each with a stack block in it. But that stack block doesn't currently have anything besides the stack in it. All right, I think I see where this might be going. Okay, I'm not mad about this. 
If we want to customize our my site under the dev directory for a development environment, we are going to create a new file dev tm hcl in dev my site. Dev tm hcl. Okay, and then I assume I'm going to do the same thing for production. Prod tm hcl. Okay, so I've created a global value for each of those stacks. Now we want to import the MySite code into the stack for each environment. So there's an import block that's going inside the stack block for each environment. So in here, I'm going to add an import block. And in here, I'm going to add an import block. So that imports what's defined inside my modules. So the file name value is going to change because otherwise it would put the file name in the, it would put the file in the same place and one would overwrite the other. So I'm just gonna grab that, go back to my modules. Okay, so we have, just like you have terraform.workspace, you also have terramate.stack.path.relative. So that gives you a little more of a path Okay, that's it's more like the path.module expression in Terraform is run Terraform generate for each of these. But it's telling me try just try jumping right in and doing Terra, Terramate run Terraform in it. So let's, it wants us to see the error. So let's go into, we'll start with dev, right? You want to start in dev, my site. And we'll do Terramate run. Terraform in it. Okay, so I haven't run Terraform, Terramate generate, so it doesn't actually have any code generated for the stack. Yep, and it says, hey, you should have run generate first. To fix this, we run Terramate. Okay, so what's interesting is I'm in the my site directory for the development environment. But when I ran Terramate generate, it went back up to the root of this project. And from there, it created the files. So it's running it relative to the project, not relative to the directory I'm currently in. But now it seems to think that if I run Ter Terramate run Terraform in it, I got a different error. Now we're gonna try apply. Okay, so I may have screwed up here because it may want me to check in my files before I try to run an init or an apply. So let's let's start there and I'm just gonna go back up to the top of the directory. We'll do a git add and just add everything and do a git commit. Okay, now let's go back into my development, my site directory, and we'll try running that Terramate in it again. And hopefully I won't get that it error. Okay, so it actually ran a Terraform in it. It got the latest local provider, installed that, and created a lock file. So now in theory, I should be able to run and apply. Hmm. Now it says it has untracked files, which is true because it created that .hcl file, which was not there before because I initialized. So I'm gonna have to do that, git command. Now let's try to do an apply. So it seems like when you're running it in the context of git, it's gonna be very particular about when you can run in it or plan or apply. It really wants you to have committed the changes before it will go forward and run anything else. Now, there's a whole bunch more in here where we're actually getting into running Git, setting up uh, some other things, but I think this is a good place to stop. We've gotten through the very basics here. Okay, what did we learn about Terramate? Terramate appears to be a way for you to 
declare the configuration of your Terraform configurations. Now we only saw a few of the different block types. So let's walk through the block types that we saw. There's a stack block type that defines a stack that's composed of different things. One of those things that we saw was the ability to import modules that you've defined for different configurations. Another block type we saw was generate HCL, which appears to allow you to generate Terraform configurations. Now, all it showed us was that we could populate the content of that, and we can now also make use of some expressions that are available in Terramate. So it showed us the fact that you can define global variables, and then you can override the values for those global variables at different levels of the folder structure. Okay, so I can generate a Terraform configuration with additional variables based off the environment that I'm in. Why would you use this product is probably the thing that I'm struggling with at the moment. What's the additional benefit you're getting that's not available in the Terraform CLI? Well, one thing is this dynamic generation of Terraform configurations. There's a few things today that are difficult to define if you're working with the Terraform configuration. And one of those is state backend. Because the state backend is generated and initialized before anything else, you can't use stuff like input variables to define your state backend. Being able to generate portions of the configuration dynamically with Terramate means that you can define the backend in Terramate and have that generate the backend block, which you would then use in Terraform. I think Terragrunt does something similar with state data. So that's an interesting application here. I can define some parameters for my Terraform configuration outside of that configuration. You also have first class support for global variables across multiple environments, but you can also override those. You may have done something similar by having TF vars files and then having some automation processes that pulled the values from those TF var files. That is an approach that you can take. This one codifies it a little bit more. So that's interesting. I just spent a little more time reading the website. And from what I can tell, Terramate is trying to strike a balance between declaratively defining Terraform configurations using HCL, a language that you're already familiar with, versus using a general purpose programming language and having that generate a Terraform configuration. I could see you doing something very similar with the Terraform CDK where you're using Python or Go to define your Terraform configurations and then having it generate valid Terraform configs for you. This is just doing it with HCL instead. I imagine that the Stacks implementation that HashiCorp is planning is going to have a lot in common with how this is doing things. All of this was just dealing with the Terramate CLI, and they do have a whole cloud service that probably expands on the capabilities and provides some additional functionality that's not available directly within the CLI. That would be part of a larger examination of what Terramate can do. All right, that's going to do it for my examination of Terramate. I spent about 35 minutes with you looking over the documentation and walking through their getting started. At this point, I have more questions than I have answers, and it certainly deserves a deeper dive and something a little more prepared in case I wanted to dig further into it. But I'm curious what your thoughts are on this video style. Did you enjoy this versus the more scripted content? Do you want me to do a mix of both? Or would you prefer me to go back to the fully scripted, fully prepared demo side of things? I'm, I'm very curious to hear everyone's response. So leave your thoughts down in the comments, good, bad, or somewhere in between. Like I said, that's going to do it for today. So until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. And I now have a cat on my desk, so that's exciting. Hey, I got a cat, by the way. Sure did. He's probably going to step on things. That should be fun. You're fun. You want to say hi to the nice people?
Hi, everybody. I'm Leo. Oh, I, that's a terrible voice. I don't know why I gave you that voice. Now go away. That's going to go at the end of the video because I'm a professional.